We could just have an actual real conversation. All right, let's three, two, one. Ariel Best. Hi, nice to meet you guys. Is that your real name? Yes, that's okay. my legal name, yeah. Uh, can you tell the audience kind of what you do, who you are, why you do it? Yeah, so I'm the VA loan lady on social media and I do VA home loans and specialize in educating veterans because I really enjoy doing it. And that's, that's it, I really like it. There's multiple reasons, but the reason I like it most is because I give help and it's really well received. And I enjoy having that mutual, mutual respect and relationship with clients. I like that. You know, on your LinkedIn, it said that you were a bartender at one point. Yeah, I was. What, when did you do that? Why'd you do it? Um, because I went to college for biology and then I couldn't find a job in my field. Went into sales, hated it, and then quit sales and said, I think I'm gonna go back to bartending till I can figure out what I wanna be when I grow up. What was your least favorite drink to make and then your favorite drink to make? My least favorite drink was a Long Island uh, or a mojito. Why are you ordering a mojito in a sports bar? I worked at a bar that was walking distance from the Panther Stadium and also the baseball stadium in Charlotte. So get a beer, get going. <laughs> That's fair. You started mortgage originating. You started a couple companies mm -hmm. um, solely based around veterans and helping, helping those who serve and who have served. What kind of drove that passion of yours to want to be in that field? So my first VA loan I ever did, I, I butchered it pretty bad. I did still manage to get them closed on their home, um, but not without a lot of effort. And I was like, why is this so hard? And then I talked to my fiance at the time and I was like, did you go through the same thing when you used your VA loan? And he said, yes. Mm -hmm. And then I asked another veteran, I said, did you go through this? He goes, I didn't even use my VA loan because they said I didn't have one. And that's when I started to realize that there was a lot of misinformation around it that I had heard too and sat down, printed the handbook, read it cover to cover and I went, that's not that bad. And then I did it again and did it again and started talking about it. Where do you think that misinformation like comes from? Like is, is it just people don't have access to the info or they're just getting bad info, they're not looking into it themselves? Honestly, I don't know. I think it's a lot of different places. Um, realtors get bad info, other loan officers get bad info. I've even heard active, active duty service members and veterans giving their fellow brothers and sisters bad info on it. And I know that that's not out of a place of malice. It's out of a place of this is what I heard, but the military community is tight knit. So when people hear things, they normally trust it. And then there is no correction of the misinformation. As gently as I can, I'm doing my best to put as much education out there so we can correct it naturally without making people feel like they making people feel like they were stupid for not knowing better because they're getting told it by superiors in the military, by friends once they're out of service, by loan officers, and those are the authority figures that they've heard this from. So I don't blame them for not knowing better. So you're really trying to challenge like that bad info and, that, and that's becoming a challenge, just trying to keep good information out there. And then also when information changes, like when the VA updates their handbook, yes. which is all the time. All the time, yes. And trying to keep stay privy to that and also educate the people. What do you think is, um, like one of the biggest challenges you faced or recurring challenges with the VA loan, like helping veterans and service members? The biggest challenge? The VA is doing everything they can to improve the VA home loan benefit as fast as they can. Like they just updated the chapter of the handbook, I don't know if you know this, that lets a veteran build their own home with a VA home loan. That, Which is a one-time close. Yes, and they used to not really have the ability to do so as easily, and so the VA said, let's make this even easier. So there's an entire department behind this loan product saying, hey guys, you guys are gonna get the benefit better every time you bring a complaint to us. So if you take something to the VA and it's valid, they will make changes to the handbook. I've done it several times. I'm like, guys, this policy doesn't make sense. This guideline is unclear. This is causing issues in underwriting. Here is my bullet points to show you that this is affecting veterans. And then we get changes. I have impacted that, not directly, but I have gotten policies in front of people to say, hey, we need to look at this. Yeah. Uh, and then pass that, it's an education campaign like crazy. And the day I can retire is the day I no longer hear, well, I was told by another lender. That means I've finished what I need to do, but we have a long way to go. And speaking of education, like you've been able to reach and educate millions of people online. And can you talk about that, like your TikTok, your different social media, like why'd you start that? And why do you think it's such a good tool to reach people? Well, uh, I mean, it's the algorithm is one of the main reasons. I've never seen a more intense and successful algorithm like TikTok where you can get that information out to people quickly and it gets absorbed and spread quickly. I used to do content for Facebook and I did video content for a long time on Facebook and then the pandemic hit. And I remember one of my friends said, you should get on TikTok instead of Facebook. And I said, okay, sure, I'll try it. And uh, <laughs> I can remember I had been posting for about four or five months on TikTok and I posted a video and it was the most kind of basic guideline from the VA home loan. 
you can use your VA loan more than one time and more than once at the same time. And I didn't know that 150,000 people did not know that. <laughs> and I put my cell phone number on the video where you can't like edit the caption and take it off. It's on. Uh -oh. and so I posted it at 5 o'clock p.m. And I will never forget this day. I posted it at 5 o'clock p.m. And I woke up the next day at 4 o'clock in the morning because my phone was ringing. And I answered it. And it was a guy that was on a naval vessel in Japan's harbor oh my gosh. and he's like hey I saw your TikTok and I'm like that's great it's four o'clock in the morning I will call you in five hours and I rescheduled and I went back to bed and then 45 minutes later my phone rang again and then it rang 765 more times that day because it was going viral viral and I was like I don't know what to do I'm so glad that people have questions yes I'm so happy to answer your questions hold on a second though there's a lot of you yeah I mean so. it's it's hard to talk to every single one of those people because you know people reach out to me so what are you doing to kind of make sure that questions don't, don't go unanswered and veterans and service members don't go like untreated unhelped now that i'm setting up my own company and we're almost ready to go i am making sure that the training is top notch like every single corner of the benefit every single corner of the process has a training manual training deck help available so that whether it's a veteran or one of our staff members they're going to be able to find the answers quickly and then get that communicated as fast as humanly possible. The faster we can get accurate and concise information out, the better. I like that. And our website's going to have so many resources. Like you can go to our website, you'll be able to plug in and get a full price quote breakdown. Like all of the numbers we are going to open source from our data for the website to our and all of our software to all of the training, everything's going to be open source. That way, if a service member wants to take it, they can. And you think open sourcing is important because like you just want to help others because informa information and mortgages is quite often gate kept by the loan officer as yeah. the liaison of that information and it's based on where that loan officer works and when you think about hey i want to buy a house most people will go to their real estate agent and then they go to a lender yep that is not how we operate which is great because TikTok allows me to get ahead of the realtor provide that right information too because realtors are also real estate agents excuse me are also a source of misinformation sometimes yeah i feel like it the real estate agent probably likes that because you know they get a client and they're like hey i want to buy a house and they say okay are you pre-approved or do you have funding and they say no then they have to start this whole new loop so i, I think it's really important to i tell people all the time like don't shop for a home Without a pre-approval. Without a pre-approval because one, you go on apps like Zillow and they say, you think you could afford all these huge houses because Zillow is just, It's about God as accurate Zillow. as the ASVAB when it comes to giving you accurate information. <laughs> it's great for monitoring, terrible for accuracy. Yeah, Same exactly. Same for Credit Karma, by the way. Yeah, Credit Karma and Credit Sesame. It's like, it's just a, it's an estimate. It's not, uh, you know, it's not like written in stone, but um, yeah, I tell people all the time because it really gives you an accurate representation of how much you could actually afford. Yes. Like having something that will be able to generate that. And because it's not just debt to income with VA, it's also residual income. And there's other more holistic factors they use for underwriting. Yeah. It's a different process. You, ha you do have to separate VA out from the rest of the other loan programs because it is both a loan and a benefit and it applies as a benefit. So it, it lets you do things you can't do with other financing and not enough people know that. Yes. Are you ready for some fun questions? Yes. All right. So, Looking, I'm not going to ask you how old you are, even though I know. I'm going to have to tell the audience. She's 54. Um, I'm aging gracefully. I'm Benjamin Button. <laughs> what would you tell your 18-year-old self today? Like, your 18-year-old Ariel, you're about to launch yourself out into the world, but you're you now. What would you tell that person? Just wait. It gets better. <laughs> I think I, I think I would tell myself. Well, first, first off, I, I don't want to make it sound like we've made all these mistakes, right? Like, I think the struggles we went through, the mistakes that we did make, make it, made us who we are today. Agreed. But I think mine would probably go along the line of, you know, like, just hang in there. Yeah, <laughs> because just it's hang gonna in be, there, yeah. It's going to be hard. And, like, I tell, I tell my soldiers and my, my friends all the time, you don't get better unless you challenge yourself. And you don't get better unless you make it suck a little bit. Like you, have <laughs> to, you have to endure the suck, you yes, know? Yes, you have to get through the suck. Yeah. I would agree with that. Yeah, Just wait as in, don't worry, you'll survive this. It gets better. Don't think this is the end, 18-year-old me. You've got a lot of things you're going to get through. You will be okay, and then we'll wind up here. All right, so if I went through your Spotify, what would I find? Slovakian trap music. <laughs> what? <laughs> what is that? You want to hear some? Slo sure. <laughs> <laughs> you asked. <laughs> I like that. Wait, hold on. 
Yeah. Okay. All right, I approve of that. I'm a, I am a music nerd, so any type of music I can get my hands on, I listen to. What about you? What am I gonna hear on yours? On my, it's a, it's an array of things. Yeah. Cause I'm like, you know, I'm a musician and I Are sing. Are you, what do you play? Yeah, I, I play guitar, drums, piano, and bass. Me too, all nice. three of those, that's yeah. so crazy. And okay. then I, I sing, I used to be a, a recording artist before the army. Oh wow. You know, I dabble in, I listen to country, pop, blues, jazz. If you were to have coffee with a historical figure, who would it be and why? They have to be like gone, like deceased. Richard Bird. Richard Bird, can you explain who that is? Richard Bird was the first person to fly over both the North and the South Poles. And when he flew over the South Pole and some of the data that he took from Antarctica was given back in the 1930s to the United States, they started spinning up Operation Deep Freeze, which my grandfather wound up deploying with him on as part of the Marine Corps in 1957, 1958. It was wave two of Operation Deep Freeze. And Richard Bird was an explorer um, and he has seen pretty much all of the continent. He started as a young kid exploring the Amazons and I think Africa, I think he went to Africa on a couple of tours and then he wanted to be a part of the flying revolution. And he was, he wound up leading the Operation High Jump and training service members and creating some of the patents with my grandfather for the harness that holds the dogs when you oh, jump wow. out of planes. Yeah, um, and I'd wanna meet him cause I'd wanna hear about his travels. I, I love exploring, so I'm a big fan of hearing what people saw the first time. Can you, like, can you imagine the first time that you would see a 210 foot tall glacier in a plane that doesn't have any technology in 1937? Yeah, it's probably pretty... Terrifying. Yeah. Exhilarating, that would be so cool. <laughs> like, I wanna hear about it. I wanna hear about the penguins you guys rescued. I wanna hear about the whales. I wanna hear about what it was like crossing the Drake Passage, all of that. Have you ever received an insult that you were actually like proud of? Like yeah. an idea, <laughs> what is that? Yeah, actually, um, so I had a veteran get mad at me on TikTok and he said, what a Semper civilian. And so I <laughs> <laughs> had a t-shirt made and a coffee cup. One of my other veterans was like, that's funny. I said, I'm gonna claim that. That's mine now, because I am a civilian. I have no shame in that. I didn't serve. I'd... And it's not that I didn't try, but I'm not gonna share my story with every veteran. Oh, I almost got in, because uh, nobody cares. Which nobody is crazy. Which is crazy to think that just because you're a civilian means you can't help us or help the veteran community, yeah. military community. It's not, I don't know, like some veterans, I feel like, and it depends on age, it depends on what branch you served in, what wars you may or may not have served in, but they have like this attitude of like a, only they, only yeah. their service was, yeah. you know, justifiable and stuff like that. And I feel like now with social media, all the older veterans, all the vet bros, they're like so against it. I'm like, no, we're helping so many people. Like we have a, we finally have a voice yeah. and it's reaching Capitol Hill. It's reaching the upper echelons of the military and we're making changes. Well, and anytime I get somebody that has that chip, so to speak, I give them empathy because, and the, what I had said to him when I responded to his comment was, you must be new here. Let me introduce myself so you know who I am in case you have questions later because I didn't, I don't know what you went through. I don't know what, what you may have had happened to you. And I'm not going to presume that I know better than you on that, but I do know better than you on the home loan benefits. So at the bare minimum, let me give you the right information here. And then you can go back to hating me. That's fine. What do you think people misunderstand about you the most? if anything. That I'm angry all the time. Um, She's pretty angry, she hit me before this. <laughs> I think people think that I'm angry all the time and I honestly think it's because I was homeschooled and I don't interact with people the way most people interact with people. And I will sometimes copy their connotation. So, you know, I'm around a bunch of salty, disgruntled veterans. People think I'm also salty and disgruntled sometimes. And I'm not, I'm normally pretty chipper, but I am pretty sharp with things. Like I know how to get things done quickly. Yeah. If you were going to describe yourself as an animal to another person, what animal would you be and why? I'd be a Shetland pony. Okay. Because I'm short, <laughs> sturdy. I got ginger hair. <laughs> it's very, very difficult to like injure me. I can. Yeah, I was going to say, they're, they're still powerful too. A mountain goat, a mountain goat, because I'm pretty good. Like I fall off a lot of rocks. I do a lot of outdoor stuff and I never die. So, Resilient. Yeah, I can take a 50 foot fall and survive. You can take a beating. Uh-huh. <laughs> Figuratively. <laughs> if, you, if you were to have a motto for your life, what do you think it would be? Um, send it, probably. Full send. Full send. I like it. Like you commit to the bit, whatever it is. What, uh, what excites you? Like what makes you happy? What gets you going? Waking up in the morning. That's a good thing? Mm -hmm. I if mean, I wake up, that's a great morning. 
Let's let's use the most of the day. And I know that sounds cliche, but let's use the most of the day. You have a finite amount of time on this planet. So if you're watching this, I'm hoping it motivates you to get out, go outside, do whatever it is that you need to do to go, hey, I, I did, I moved the needle. It doesn't need to be this. It needs to be this and then this and then mm -hmm. this and then this and then this because you don't get all the way up without going through all the phases. That reminds me of uh, a quote and that's actually my next question. So one of my, one of my favorite quotes is, <laughs> we can move you if you want. Wow, the sun just said good morning. Yeah. The sun. Okay. Nice. <laughs> one of my favorite quotes is by Martin Luther King Jr. And it's, um, you don't have to see the whole staircase. You just have to take the first step. Are there any like quotes by any authors or men or women that you look up to that you kind of try to not live by, but just remind yourself of every once in a while? I have two tattooed on me, yes. Nice. So one says I have measured out my life in coffee spoons because I drink an insane amount of coffee. More coffee, please. Yes. If you, that's my love language. So when you, <laughs> we're like, do you want some coffee? Yes. Should have had coffee out here. No, it's okay. <laughs> um, I've measured out my life in coffee spoons because that reminds me that take things, appreciate the things that you're doing. Do big things, but take the time to appreciate every step that you're doing them and go, wow, and give yourself the praise. That reminds me to do that and to say, take time for myself and enjoy what I'm doing with my life. And I do. I love what I'm doing with my life. And then the other one is eventually soulmates meet for they have the same hiding places. Mm. Uh, and I don't say soulmates romantically. I mean just the people in your life that are going to be important. Your They're people. going to be my people, yeah. my tribe. Yeah. Um, and it is true. I've found more community, even though I'm not a veteran with the veterans, than I've ever found in any other community. Yeah. I feel welcome awesome. and accepted, and I feel like... Well, we love to have you. Thank you. I appreciate it. I like being here. I feel like I need to be very careful with my invite to the metaphorical barbecue and do my best <laughs> to maintain it. So. What, um, so, like, what's next for you? Uh, saving the rest of the world once I get done saving the veterans from all the bad information. Probably some more skydiving. Uh, I want a horse. I would like to get a horse. Okay. Yeah. I feel like that's feasible. Yeah. I would ultimately big picture, big picture, I want to retire on the mountains and open up a 501c3. Okay. I want to have a charity. I want to give people a space to breathe, like a therapeutic center of some kind. Mm -hmm. Haven't figured it all the way out yet. It's in the works. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. Second to last question. Where, where can the audience find you? Social media. Um, VA Lone Lady. On pretty much every platform, Reddit, Discord, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, threads. MySpace. I wish. I wish. <laughs> bring back MySpace. <laughs> I would love for MySpace to be back. But pretty much everywhere is the VA Lone Lady or just VA Lone Lady. And then um, do you have any closing statements or do you have anything that you want people just to know? Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching this. Yeah. Thanks for being here with me. Thank you.